Welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today I'm talking about the Wing Stuff skid plate. Now I want to give you just a brief history of where this Wing Stuff skid plate has come from because I have been in communication with the developer for some time and I did a video review of this skid plate showing the installation review oh maybe a month or so ago and uh, the, the product was still going through some revisions. And just to show you kind of uh, the progression of where it's come from, the first one I received was before it was even a wing stuff skid plate, was this version here, which was a pretty uh, flexible, kind of bendable version. Uh, There's no logo on it. There were cutouts here for the uh, oil filter, the drain plugs, and the DCT filter. That was version one. And then, I'm just going to set that to the side. Version two is the one I actually installed on my bike. And that was this one here. It did have wing stuff cut into it. But this one had the wing stuff logo. It also had some slots uh, cut into it for ventilation. And uh, basically, it was the same, same thickness, still kind of a bendable aluminum. And the final version is kind of a step back to the very first iteration with a couple of important changes. Um, this one is a solid plate with no cutouts for the oil filter or the drain plug. And the theory being here that rather than uh, having a plate that you remove to change the oil, you'll simply just remove the belly pan to change your oil. Or I'm sorry, the skid plate to change the oil. Now, the developer, the designer, has added a little bend here. You can see uh, there's a little, uh, a little bit of a bend, and I think that's for fitment purposes. He has also changed the mounting system, which I prefer. The original one had that long bolt that had to go up into the frame kind of at an angle, kind of clunky, honestly. And now he's come out with a new kind of a T-bolt uh, that fits into a different part of the frame. I think that's a better system. I'm not sure yet how I feel about the acorn nuts used to mount to the front brackets. Uh, but we'll, we'll know when we get it installed and give it a try. Now this one is significantly thicker than the original. Uh, I'd say you, you're, you, you can't really, you can barely bend it a little bit, but it doesn't have much flex to it. It's much more substantial. It would definitely take more of an impact. I believe this now sits underneath the exhaust clips. It no longer mounts up under those exhaust clips. In fact, I think it's probably too thick to fit under those exhaust clips. Let's get to the garage. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be installing this rear bolt first. And then we're going to come back and install the uh, two acorn nuts and captive bolts that go in these uh, front, these square holes up here. Okay, so your wing stuff skid plate is going to come with two of these. These are captive bolts. You'll notice they have kind of a square shoulder on them and an acorn nut. And these are going to mount from the bottom and we'll attach the acorn nut on top after putting the skid plate in here obviously so you should have two of these and then you should also have your little t-nut that goes at the rear we're going to start by installing the rear t-nut or i call it a t-bolt i guess it's a t-bolt well, while we're talking about the hardware this little t-bolt comes with a nut that I'm able to get a 13 millimeter socket on no problem. But on the acorn nuts, the 13 will not fit. So I had to go to a 14 and the 14 fits. I think it will also work with a 9 16 So you might, if you can't get your 14 millimeter wrench to work, you might try a 9 16 So let me show you what we're doing here. If you look at the center stand, I'm on the right side of the motorcycle. 
And if we go up underneath, and I'm going to come up under here, just in front of the center stand, and I'm going to show you that there is a hole in the frame right there. And the object is to install this T-bolt up in here in that slot and then turn it 90 degrees. And then, of course, it will hold inside that slot. Our hole in the frame, I do have the center, I have the motorcycle on the center stand. We have our hole here, and now I'm going to bring my plate. Remember, I have it kind of shoved up with the uh, towel. And that's just to kind of hold it up so I don't have to hold two things at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that T-nut up in there, up like this. And then I'm going to turn it to get it up into the front 90 degrees. Now let me turn it like this. And you want to make sure that you already have the nut on because it's going to make it a lot easier. And once we get that T-nut up inside the frame, now we're going to turn it 90 degrees. And we're going to start pulling down on this bolt. You pull down on this nut and that kind of holds that T-bolt in place so that you can then tighten this nut. Now, there, if you wonder, well, how once I get this in here, do I know if that T-nut is in the correct position? There is a small indicator on the end of this bolt to kind of give you the orientation of that T-bolt. So when it is up and down, you know you've got it in the correct orientation, and you can go ahead and tighten down this nut. And the center stand is sort of in the way, but you have enough room to work with the motorcycle on the center stand. And I believe it's easier to do this with the motorcycle on the center stand. Now I'm going to leave it loose enough so I can move this plate forward to backward along this slot uh, until I get my uh, front uh, brackets installed. So the next thing is I'm going to start on the right side of the bike and I'm going to remove this bolt here. It's a 12 millimeter bolt. It's in between the first two exhaust pipes. Okay, so our objective is to feed this bracket so that it sits in this hole, but it has to come up here around this exhaust pipe because our plate is over here. If I got it going the right way, I think I do. Let me make sure I've got it going the right way. The designer says you don't have to pre-bend this you can go ahead and start your screw or your bolt in here and then start tightening it. And as you tighten it, I think the object is that it will start to bend this uh, aluminum. It's pretty thin, thin. This is actually thicker than the first one I did, but it is a thin aluminum. It, it will bend. My concern is I don't want you to take a risk of stripping the threads in this engine case or on your bolt. Uh, because that would be a bad thing. So if you're going to do it that way, you want to make sure that you've got your bolt in completely straight uh, before you start bending this, um, this little bracket here. So here's the hole that bolt, the bolt goes into, like this. Here's my bracket for the right side. And I'm going to try... But see, my problem is now my bolt is going to try to go in at an angle. I don't want that. I don't want to run the risk of cross-threading that this bolt or uh, the threads in my engine case. So what I'm going to do, I know from having done this in the past, this is the bracket, that it's a bend about right here. And I'm going to use a pair of pliers, and I'm just going to give it a little, actually two pair of pliers. I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend because I want that to fit flush up against this 
engine case before I start putting this bolt in. Okay, just as an example, if you look at this bracket, which I bent earlier, this one's a little bit thinner. It's not quite as heavy a gauge, uh, and that's the bend that I had to put into this. You can see it's maybe a half an inch below the hole. And what happens is now when I fish that bracket through, you can see it sort of fits flush with that uh, hole in the engine case. And that's what I want. I'll worry about the other bends to the bracket later, but I definitely want that to sit flush. Okay, so you can see I've put a little bit of a bend right there into this bracket. And let's see if I can get it to sit a little more flush. Now I may have to bend around that exhaust pipe a little more too, but let's see if I can't get this to at least sit up in there a little better. Oh yeah, that's gonna be better, definitely. I can go ahead and actually start bending it down here at the bottom too, because it's gonna have to bend around that pipe anyway. And now it's flush enough to where I feel comfortable putting my bolt in. I think I can get a good straight in, and it may bend some more as we tighten this bolt down. Let me get the bolt started. And as you tighten this bolt, that aluminum on that little bracket is gonna bend more, and that's fine. Now down here at the bottom, what's happening, let's take a look at the entire bracket so you can kind of see what's going on. You can see that eventually this is going to have to lay flat up against this plate right here, as you can see. So it will eventually bend into place and we will put our square bolt, or our, I should say our carriage bolt in, to get that in too, but I'm gonna tighten this a little more first. Okay, it's not completely tight, but it's tight enough to where I can start manipulating this bracket to get it to where I want it to be flat enough to line up with my carriage bolts to give it a decent, and I'm gonna slide this forward just a little bit and we will see if we can get one of these uh, carriage bolts to get started on there. If you've got big hands, <laughs> this could be fun. Getting this acorn nut started on this bolt. Okay, I was able to get that acorn nut started now I need to tighten it using a 13 millimeter wrench. Is it 13 millimeter? I thought it was 13 millimeter. Maybe it's 14. I guess it's a 14. Okay, so let's see. We've got the right side on. Now let's go see if we can get the left side on. It might be easier for me to put this up on the center stand to do this. Okay, now we're on the left side. I did put it on the center stand. I think it's easier to get to this left side bolt if you put it up on the center stand. And there's our bolt. The left side bracket installs exactly the same way as the right side. I went ahead and put a little pre-bend in that bracket so it would fit flush. And there's no need to show you the entire process because it works exactly the same way. See, here's where my bracket is right now, and it's got to go down a little bit more. So we're going to pull it down like that and bend it around so that it's a little more 
There we go. That will be pretty close. I think I can get my bolt in. Once you tighten all these bolts up, it kind of reshapes that bracket, that soft aluminum, uh, to where it needs to be. After tightening the left side acorn nut, as I'm doing here with a 14 millimeter wrench, I'm going to go back and re-tighten all of my bolts, uh, mainly those uh, engine bolts that go into the engine guard. I want to make sure those are good and tight, and we'll just go through and tighten everything, including the rear bolt that holds this skid plate in place uh, to the frame. Now, the rear bolt uses a 13 millimeter wrench. So what is my final analysis of this wing stuff skid plate? Well, first of all, it's pretty easy to install. It probably will take you 15 to 20 minutes. It does provide good coverage underneath the engine, and I think the plate is thick enough to stop a lot of uh, issues that if they were to hit the engine could cause damage. Now, when it comes time to do an oil change, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to remove this plate and reinstall it. The T-bolt is a little fiddly uh, to get in and out, but I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. My only concern are with these side brackets. I'm afraid they're soft enough that with a strong impact from below, they will bend, and they might cause that front cowl to crack. The skid plate would probably also come into contact with the bottom of the engine, but I doubt that that would do any harm. So overall, it does seem to provide uh, what I would consider to be a good level of protection against rocks or gravel or small objects hitting the underside of the engine. I want to point out that this video was not sponsored by Wing Stuff and no money exchanged hands. However, they did send me this skid plate to install and review. If you're interested in ordering this skid plate, I'm going to put links in the description of this video, or you can go to wingstuff.com to place your order. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe.